coming up on The Reveal. <laughs> Neglected animals passed off to unsuspecting families. I think that justice needs to be served for all these poor dogs. The Reveal investigates why it took so long to stop a Georgia breeder accused of selling sick dogs. Then, firefighters serving, now suffering. The cancer was wrapped around my vocal cords. So the doctor actually had to cut it off of my vocal cords. They paralyzed a couple of them. So that's what's done this to my voice. What's behind the claims that so many first responders are now battling cancer? Plus, back to school, but struggling. These kids are gonna struggle later. And when they struggle, they'll either push through or they'll quit. Digging into the learning curve facing students and what some districts are doing to get back on track. From our Midtown studios in Atlanta, the reveal begins now with our multi-Emmy and National Moral Award winning team of investigators. Welcome to The Reveal. I'm Rebecca Lindstrom. You've heard the expression, you get what you pay for. Well, it may not be the case when it comes to dogs. Pure breeds can cost thousands of dollars, even those that live neglected in squalor or come with hidden medical problems. But more than sick dogs, we found a sick animal welfare system that often lacks the resources to hold breeders accountable. <laughs> Instagram, <laughs> Facebook, chat groups and websites. They are filled with pictures of puppies. From naps to new outfits, dog owners like Janice share the journey. They're family, they're my kids. Janice has asked us not to use her last name. Her posts talk about more than shopping trips and fashion. When it comes to her Yorkie Blanco, she says it is a fight for life. Blanco has four places where her skull never closed and fluid builds up on her brain. The swelling causes confusion and lack of coordination. It was devastating because they told me that if her conditions got worse, then I should put her down. And I'm attached to her. I love her. As much as Janice loves Blanco, she is confused why the dog was up for sale in the first place. Blanco wasn't cheap, $2,000 plus the cost of the flight to get her from Sewanee to San Francisco. Blanco was lethargic, listless. Janice used her social media voice to tell others not to buy from Monica Wong, the pet dealer who sold Blanco. What followed were accusations on both sides of cyber stalking and bullying. They now have competing court action. Wong insists the dog only had one hole in her skull when sold, sort of like our newborns, and was otherwise perfectly healthy. I'm Caroline, and I'm from North Idaho. I'm calling from Kentucky. We spoke with more than a dozen people who purchased dogs from Wong. Nine agreed to go on camera. How has this impacted you? Emotionally. I purchased. Rachel says she bought an Imperial Shih Tzu that died four days later. My puppy died. Judy's dog only lived two days after she picked her up and the vet bills cost another $3,000. I found um, five star Yorkie. Caroline paid 1,800 for what she thought was a purebred Yorkie, only to find out Embark DNA testing says it's more Maltese. It doesn't make me love her any less, but it just makes me angry. And two breeders, but dogs they believe had brucellosis, a highly contagious disease that keeps females from having puppies. They can't prove Wong's dogs were the source, but the timing fits. Christy says the disease impacted more than a dozen of her animals. I think that justice needs to be served for all these poor dogs. It was very, very heartbreaking. <laughs> more than a sick dog, the reveal found a sick animal welfare system that lacks resources and often will to hold breeders and dealers accountable. For at least two years, the Department of Agriculture licensed Wong to sell dogs out of her Swanee house without ever requiring her to prove that county zoning would allow it. The horrendous smell just absolutely hit me in the face. It was a complaint that finally brought Gwinnett County Animal Control to the house. Turns out breeding isn't allowed in the home. Most of us don't think about the living condition of our pets before they join our family. 
but I find it hard to believe that any of us imagined our puppy would come from a place like this. When Monica Wong was told to move her animals, she brought them here to an old Brewster's ice cream store. Instead of milkshake machines, inspectors found boards blocking the view of dirty cages. According to this report, the dogs would go unattended nearly 20 hours each day. At this point, the state ordered her to stop selling dogs. But Wong didn't stop. How do we know? Blanco! Because one month later, Janice bought Blanco. The department also found Wong advertising on half a dozen other websites. Five star Yorkies. She was operating under perfectly posh pets. Six months later, even though the Department of Agriculture knew Wong wasn't playing by the rules, they gave her a new license, allowing her to open a pet store. There was absolutely no ventilation. The dogs that she had in the pens in the front were, were panting so heavily. <laughs> when Animal Control went to check it out, Wong didn't even know how many dogs were there. She told inspectors 45. They counted 81. Animal welfare attorney Claudine Wilkins. Every proud and legitimate breeder knows how many animals they have, how they're bred. And also, but solicitor Brian Whiteside is focused on another number, 61. That's how many citations Animal Control wrote that day. There's allegations of animal cruelty, possible hoarding, uh, unsanitary conditions. We tried to talk with Wong at a recent court hearing. She declined, and her attorney hasn't responded to our emails. But she will get to present her side to a jury. She has pleaded not guilty. These women want to know why Wong, though, is the only one accused. Her husband's name, Kwok Wong, is on the business license and stop order. Her husband opened the door of the facility and let me in. And several people sent their payments to another woman, Susan Miller. Why does that matter? A bad breeder may just simply disguise their entire operation under their friend's name or relative's name. And unless there's some hard evidence to connect the two, the Department of Agriculture is not going to know that. Is there the manpower to investigate when you suspect that that is happening? No. A fact confirmed by the department itself. We have 14 inspectors that are tasked with licensing and regulating over 4,000 establishments. And that's exactly why local assistance is, is so key to this. If you say something, say something. But local law enforcement doesn't always understand. A dog doesn't have to be beaten or starved to press animal cruelty charges. And there's still little recourse when the dog you get is not as advertised. So the fluids, they build up, and some days her head is quite a bit more swollen. Janice has no idea how long Blanco will live, but says her fight is about more than one dog. <laughs> feeling shared by many who say something needs to change. Every dog has its day, and I'm going to leave it at that. Janice's bank refunded the money it cost to buy Blanco. Monica Wong has asked for the dog back, but Janice has refused. The complaints uncovered by the reveal span several years, in which time there were also reports of happy customers. Right now, Wong does not have a license to breed or sell dogs in Georgia. Up next on The Reveal, firefighters just doing their job. Being caught in a flashover, of course, in a collapse, we're not thinking of the foam agent that we might be using. Why they're now learning they were exposed to a dangerous chemical and what's being done to help. For more on these investigations or to submit a tip to the Reveal team, text REVEAL to 404-873-9114 or email us at thereveal at 11alive.com. They're often hailed as heroes because they risk their lives running into burning buildings when others run away. But some retired Georgia firefighters say it's the hidden dangers on the job that could have killed them. Our investigation uncovers what's potentially putting some of our firefighters' lives at risk. The fact that there is a problem with a triple F phone, as we are being made more aware of now. 
When Mark Johnson signed up to be an Atlanta firefighter, he knew the big risks. What makes being a firefighter dangerous in your eyes? Well, being caught in a flashover, of course, in a collapse, we're not thinking of the foam agent that we might be using. 31 years of dedicated service. Fellow retired firefighter Craig Chait didn't think about that either. I never assumed or thought that there was any issues with AFFF or that it could cause cancer or that it could hurt you in the future. They both can't stop thinking about it now. Aqueous film forming foam, or AFFF, is a special firefighting tool for putting out flammable liquids. It's made with chemicals called PFAS. They help stop hazardous fires, but that may come at a price. In January, you got a call from your doctor. And what did your doctor tell you? That I had stage four uh, cancer of my thyroid. The cancer was wrapped around my vocal cords. So the doctor actually had to cut it off of my vocal cords. They paralyzed a couple of them. So that's what's done this to my voice. It's a product that has a number of potential concerns to it. Miriam Calkins works for a branch of the CDC called NIOSH, or the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health. The federal agency is now researching how both PFAS and AFFF exposure impact firefighters. There's a lot of research that's been building up um, that suggests that exposure to PFAS may lead to adverse health outcomes, including cancer, organ damage, reproductive and immune system effects. The chemicals are potentially linked to prostate cancer. That's what Mark is recovering from. How did you feel after you found out that this foam that you were exposed to on a regular basis yes. could cause cancer? Well, it, it certainly alarmed me. This foam isn't used every day. It is specially formulated to tackle fuel and oil-based fires, the type that may break out at industrial plants, Air Force bases, and airports like Hartsfield-Jackson. That's where Craig and Mark were exposed for nearly two decades. We had to have an annual training burn every year, and that would take course over a process of a week, and foam would be discharged out of the apparatus and would have to be replenished. So firefighters were handling this. You weren't yeah. wearing masks? Not at all. You weren't wearing gloves? The only gloves I was wearing were, were my leather firefighting gloves. And does that do anything to protect you from contact? No, they get wet. They, they, can absorb, they can absorb whatever liquid they come in contact with. Mark and Craig are among a growing number of firefighters across the world who believe AFFF hurt their health. Hundreds of firefighters are now part of a Facebook group to raise awareness. Many thought it was safe enough to play in, bathe in, even let small children splash in, treating it no differently than water from a hose or snow from the sky. But despite the growing concern about the safety, it is still in use today, including at Hartsfield Jackson. Just last year, the city of Atlanta approved a contract to provide the airport with AFFF until 2023. And while Georgia passed a law in 2019 to ban AFFF use in training exercises, it is still used in emergency situations. Does it scare you that this stuff is still in use? Yes, it does now. <laughs> of course it does. Especially because Mark's job post-retirement at the Atlanta Speedway. We do carry AFFF foam. It's a 250-gallon tank, and it is mixed with water and AFFF foam. And so for somebody like you who worked with this foam, who got cancer, and now is worried that it could have caused your cancer, how does it feel now knowing that it's still in use here? and that Well, it's concerning, and I will have discussions with my boss in regards to that because of course we need to change up what we're doing. But I, I don't like it at all that they're still using it, that they haven't tried to find something better, that they haven't gone to other means. It turns out there are alternatives, but Culkin says replacing AFFF isn't that simple. Um, but there does not appear to be a single product, at least not yet, that performs as well as AFFF. So it's kind of open like that. Mark and Craig are both cancer-free today, but they worry what's in store for their health in the future and what health scares may await their fellow firefighters. I'm better now and I don't have cancer, but I'm, it's gonna take me with everything that I had probably six to eight more months 
to be normal again. I'm still not normal. Why should people have to go through that? There are now thousands of people involved in lawsuits against the companies that made PFAS and sold the foams. We reached out to the city, but it declined to comment. Up next on The Reveal, he's never failed a class until the pandemic. And I just couldn't keep up. Second semester, I just kind of gave up. Find out what districts and families are doing to fight learning loss. Welcome back to The Reveal. School districts across Georgia and the U.S. are seeing a dramatic rise in students who failed or dropped out during the pandemic. After a year of lost learning, we looked at what districts and families are doing to help close the gap. Can everyone hear me? A remote learning class. I and at least discuss. Gone awry. Guys, what happened? Students falling asleep during instruction and teachers trying their best. I would really appreciate your comments and I would like... Despite wild working conditions. We would be in big trouble with And understanding that toll is just the beginning. Language arts, another one that I struggled with. 14-year-old Diego Ruiz is among those struggling. The Gwinnett County student failed two subjects last year, math and language arts. She gave us like a new assignment every single day. And I just couldn't keep up. Second semester, I just kind of gave up. Yeah. Evalia is Diego's mother. He's never failed a class. Until the pandemic. Yeah, until the pandemic. According to district records, 354 more students dropped out in Gwinnett County last year than the year before, a 13% increase. Diego's mother believes the district did not do enough to help students and parents, especially navigating remote learning. And I think they dropped the ball uh, in regards of teaching them how to access, teaching them how to, how to, you know, thoroughly read <laughs> the directions. Dr. Clay Hunter is an associate superintendent at Gwinnett Schools. So do you think the students that failed a grade, there should be an asterisk next to that F? The pandemic existed, right? So, it, I mean, it happened. Um, but I also know that there was some high quality, highly engaging, very rigorous instruction going on. But even the best districts in the country saw education gaps. Gwinnett, districts across the state and country, many reporting students failed at alarming levels. To help in Gwinnett, its summer school program went through a paradigm shift. Instead of remediation, it focused on acceleration to get students more ready for the next grade. Summer enrollment typically runs about 7,000 students. This past summer, more than 32,000 students participated, quadruple the number. The reality is um, we've recognized very early on that any learning gaps that existed because of the pandemic aren't going to be solved in this year. We're developing a multi-year intervention plan. So that's why Evelia says they received summer school information too late to enroll. They can't afford a tutor. Evalia won't say if she's worried for her son's future, but you can read it all over her face. These kids are going to struggle later. And when they struggle, there's only two options. They'll either push through or they'll quit. For more on our series, The Learning Curve, featuring stories about schooling amid the pandemic, go to 11alive.com slash education. For more on these investigations or to submit a tip to the Reveal team, text REVEAL to 404-873-9114 or email us at thereveal at 11alive.com. Our investigations have impact. Is there a reason why you won't talk with me? You've recently been indicted. This is on the record. Change laws. Don't you think someone needs to be held accountable for this? Expose crimes. <laughs> crimes that lead to murder indictments. We would not be able to prosecute this case without that video. See the 11 Alive investigators change the face of local news. Thanks for watching. You can find more of our investigations on 11 Alive's YouTube channel. We'll see you right back here next time on The Reveal.